Hello, I'm Donna Hanks. I'm a self-development coach and author and I specialise in self-love, beliefs, law of attraction, uh, the benefits of meditation and I've studied many, many philosophies and theories from others to create my own theories and my own methods for healing, including heart coaching and my goddess prayer. I've also created my own magic formula and this is after many, many years of trial and error, asking for guidance and totally feeling uh, directed from my own uh, magic powers, I call them, to create the uh, magic formula. What's worked for me and what I see and feel is the, the basis to create something new from what something perhaps we've never had before and um and and how we do this uh i've got a passionate interest in how we manifest how we create and how we have a desire and sometimes we can create that desire in our life and sometimes we can't and that's what's driven me uh for these answers now, I often record uh, coaching audio such as this without a script, and today I just have some bullet points. Uh, I just feel it's best for me to speak. Uh, it's more heartfelt if I don't have an actual script and, and talk a lot of ad lib on the way. I also talk a lot about, and I teach others, being your true self, and that's where we have our true power. And I believe that's the reason I often don't have a script as well because I go like to go with the flow <laughs> and what comes to mind and, and perhaps I'm actually getting guidance as I'm doing the recordings. So today I want to talk about my magic formula. I know it sounds like a very big call. A lot of things I've been saying lately on my social media, it sounds very ambitious. I understand this. I As I'm writing it, I feel you that it, I actually say in some of the posts that is a big call to say I know. Um, I'm going to say straight up, you know, like if I knew how to create anything I want, would I have everything I want? It's just a question that just came to me. Um, you would think so logically. My response to that is I feel that I'm only just now getting a lot of the power. Um, I talk a lot about lately I've been talking about the power of water. And as I started to record this audio, it's raining outside. It's beautiful I meaning you can hear the rain outside <laughs> um powerful it feels powerful and I love water and the power of water and I'm actually going to go out stand in the rain um yeah because I feel it's cleansing and it's totally like rebirth so I feel I'm only just receiving a lot of my personal power um, as I say this I'm actually touching my heart I talk about heart coaching lately and the goddess prayer it's all very it's all god is within and, and healing and self-power and that's where my teachings heading that's where my coaching's heading and that's where i'm going in my own self-development so i understand it sounds ambitious and it does sound like a big promise and i believe it's true and i'm using it myself in my own life to create what i want and I also believe that ultimately, the ultimate goal, aim, target, whatever word you want to use, the ultimate end result is to be happy. And I feel very happy. So in that sense, I feel I can coach as I feel totally happy. I feel at peace. Like lately, since I've felt so peaceful and I've been doing my own um, processes, yes, there's challenges I sometimes share some of them on my social media, but not much because it's personal to me. Challenges that we have, I can feel peaceful about them. I, I feel calm. Yes, I express my emotions. I also feel very calm about them. I have this sense of peace over me. Lately, I've also been spending a lot more time in nature, which I also talk about in my coaching. If you don't feel well, if you're not feeling your best, go outside because generally one would not be outside, I believe, when they don't feel well. So that's an interesting. Um, and please note this in your life if you're not feeling well, like anxious or anything. If you're actually indoors or outdoors at the time, note that most likely would not be outdoors. 
because there's so much powerful positive energy when we are outdoors so just note that you could be in a car and feel stressed and anxious as well which i would classify definitely as not being outside so being outdoors the rain i'm going to stand in the rain i recently went to the beach it was amazing the power i want to spend more time at the beach because of the power of the water the energy in the earth (laughs) this is where it's all it's all about this so at the same time, I really enjoy just working from my bedroom <laughs> and being in bed and recording audios and helping people. I, we need, I do, we need. We need to be outside. So there's, there's, when I have a coaching audio such as this and I have an intention about what I want to talk about, they'll inevitably be a tangent. <laughs> and this is today's. The power of nature and the power of water. This is where I'm going with my coaching and my self-development. So I'm into daily meditation. I love it. I love it. I'm addicted. I teach that because the daily meditation is addictive for feeling good and I am addicted to feeling good. So back to how I was saying that I feel qualified to teach others the magic formula and all my other coaching methods as I am happy. And that's my ultimate to be happy. So yes, I may not have every single item that I want to create. And maybe I don't really need these items. It's very satisfying to feel this way, to feel there's desires. There's material items I would love to have. And I'm not going to list them here today. I desire them, I don't need them, which is also key to attracting, not needing. There's certainly things I would like to achieve and have and I call them desires. I totally believe they'll come, I'll receive and it's it's totally like just believing that you can have this. It's not needing it instantly. I've dropped a lot of that as well. Now I'm sort of going more into the whole big picture and today I want to talk more about part one. (laughs) But there's some other keys into how we do create our desires. I like the word desires. A lot of it is totally being at peace with where we are. So that's my qualification to how I can teach if you're interested in, in being helped by me. I feel happy. I feel good. I'm satisfied. I feel at peace. It's an amazing, beautiful feeling. And yes, there's things I want to create in my life. And I'm very driven and I'm very ambitious. And at the same time, I feel totally at peace with what I have. And I think that's the key. So if you'd like to hear more about how I got to this, um, at any time, please contact me for more. So the intention of this part one of beliefs is beliefs, I should say, (laughs) our beliefs. That's the part one of the magic formula. So I have three parts to the magic formula. I love the power of three. If you follow me, you'll know that I'm into three words, three word headlines. Sometimes the three words are also an acronym that spell another word. (laughs) And I get very excited. Like I have a program, Focus Action Beliefs. And I love that it spells fab. And there's so many of them. There's, There's too many to list. I've been working on this for, as I say, 30 years of study in the last 18 months full-time just doing this work. And I have some marketing clients. I have some business clients on do their public relations and marketing. And mostly I'm working on my self-development and my programs to create these beautiful methods. Um, and there's many, many, many methods out there. So I understand um, you, one sometimes gets confused. I'm at, at a point where I don't actually follow. Oh, I see things on social media because we can't miss them. I don't actually follow anyone else who does similar work as I don't want it to influence me. I don't want it to seem like I've got it from them. I, I believe I have enough knowledge and I certainly have enough experience. <laughs> so life experience. My life experience up to now, I'm 48 years old, and my study has culminated into my theories and my methods. Um, I, I teach a three-month program as well. So there's a number three again. Um, I package things up into three. I love three steps. Let's do it in three parts. Let's have three consultations and so on. Three-month programs. I think an ideal time for, like I have a mind, body, heart makeover, that's three months. Um, I can coach you for any amount of months, but I also like quick therapy. Because I've been healed with quick therapy, hypnosis and so on. I've created things, my how to eliminate negative beliefs and so on, and other beautiful methods like goddess prayer. That's quick. 
that's relatively quick com- considering what it does to your mind and how mind-blowing results. So that's a, that's a bit more about where I'm at with my coaching. I love three parts, three words, three steps, three months, but I also like quick therapy. I like clicking your finger three times to change something. Mind power. All right, so a little bit of an introduction there about myself and my philosophy. Um, so let's talk about beliefs. Now, beliefs, amazing, amazing power of beliefs. Part one of my magic formula. Everything, it's everything. It's the power. It's, it's, I believe it's where we are, what we have, what we believe to be true is what we create. It's, it's subconscious. Again, I can just be concise in this coaching audio today as a general understanding about beliefs and we usually form them in early childhood if you'd like to also agree with that theory. Um, of course, I invite you to, I should say, I invite you to agree with this. You totally have your own beliefs. I choose to believe that our beliefs are formed in early childhood. It makes perfect sense to me. I've done lots of study and I just choose to believe this. We can study something and choose not to believe it. We can say, well, actually, I'd rather go with my own. And I'm always say, with everything I've learned, we choose our beliefs. We choose that we want to believe something and we don't believe it. We can read a statistic and say, well, I don't think that's true. (laughs) So just believe what you want to be true for you. And if you want to believe that your beliefs are formed in early childhood, then you can choose that belief as well. Now, the good news is that we can change our beliefs. And there's always good news in all my audios. And I say to my people when I coach them one-on-one, great news. We can change this in an instant. Isn't that amazing? And they'll feel better instantly just knowing that they can change it. So, so you can change. So yes, the good news is <laughs> we can eliminate beliefs. Um, now, this is amazingly powerful, amazingly life-changing. Just imagine if you have a belief your whole life and that's totally uh, sabotaging you, you know, your success or for what you want, it's holding you back possibly something someone said or someone treated you in a certain way when you were a child um, and then when that's gone, then your whole life changes. It's absolutely amazing. So I um, won't get into this in this audio how we eliminate them because this is something very personal and very sacred um, that I teach and in a personal consultation. Um, but I can give you some examples of how we create beliefs and how this then limits us. Now, I use a few examples in my I Love You book, which is about self-love and beliefs and the importance of beliefs and and how it um, shapes our self-worth and our self-love. And I remembered lots of stories when I was writing the book and there were quite a few from um, my teenage years. So um, I also believe that's not just early childhood where we receive our beliefs from. It can be any time in our life. And I, I believe that teenage years are crucial. Um, and there's a chapter in the book about it. So uh, how we are very impressionable and what people say to us at that age because we're so vulnerable. I believe you know, like a lot um, of our beliefs about our looks will be for be performed, um, be formed <laughs> in our teenage years, I believe. So just one quick example. I vividly remember a teacher berating me and um, like telling me off and saying I was hopeless at tennis. I was 14. And, um, and then when I was writing about beliefs and now that I'm, I'm into them even more than I ever have been, I recall thinking I adopted that belief. I believed I was hopeless at tennis. Um, I was probably crying. I was sad. I remember feeling sad. Um, now, as I'm talking about beliefs today, I can see that we can be told something or be treated in a way or we can um, see other people the way our parents treat each other and so on. Um, we can either go one way or the other. We can choose to adopt that belief or in this case with the tennis. Okay, I'm terrible at tennis because the teacher told me I was terrible at tennis because I must be because she's the teacher and she told me. Or we could go on to totally like switch it and be the opposite and go on to like, I'll show her, I'll be great at tennis and become a world-class tennis superstar. (laughs) So we could use it and choose to believe it or we can say, 
No, because we don't want to be like that. So um, let's use this example in, say you're poor as a child, a poor childhood. You could choose to be poor. I'm poor. I'm totally believe that I'm poor because I was poor as a child, so I must still be poor. Or people go on to be the total opposite to that. And because the feelings were so bad for being poor or those circumstances are so uncomfortable to be poor, they would go the opposite and they don't want it. So they'll be rich because they're driven to be rich because they want to move away from the being poor. And you see a lot of those stories and just YouTube research success. And there'll be a story there about an amazingly successful rapper who's come from the, you know, poor Bronx and terrible, terrible upbringing. So that can drive us. So we can have a belief from our early childhood or teenage years or any time in our lives and we can choose to believe it. And it could be subconscious, of course, um, where we don't even know we're doing this. Um, And sometimes with some therapy, we'll actually bring it to the surface. So we can certainly go to the source and we can go to where it came from. For example, the teacher with the tennis um, or something mum or dad said to us or how mum and dad were and we watched them and that's what we became. We can certainly go to the source or there's many ways we can go about it in personal coaching. But the good news is you can totally delete it. Imagine Imagine the freedom, the amazing freedom. I've lifted, shifted, deleted, eliminated many negative limiting beliefs and it's totally life-changing you then go on to not have that belief therefore complete different behavior make sense amazing can't rave enough about the power of deleting and limiting belief definitely part one because we and there's other audios i've recorded on this um but again i always say as i grow in my development i like to share my latest insights so I still have the same beliefs, even from writing my book. Many years ago, I still believe everything in the book. I also have a new, a new development and how to um, how to treat or how to heal. Um, so we either adopt the belief, or we totally go against it. I see, I can see how I've done that myself. Um, now I teach, <laughs> I'll teach you how to delete a limiting belief and how it can change your life. That's definitely part one. Because with the beliefs as well, like we just, it's like I say default, we will default back to that belief. So we can make, we can make changes to want something else, but we have to delete the belief first or else the other work won't work. Okay, the deleting the belief has to go first to the, for the affirmations and all the other beautiful things that I teach to work. So that's why part one is find the, the limiting belief and we delete it. Okay, so yeah, so I'm sure I've just used um, some good examples there, but I just thought of another one that popped into my head if to also illustrate if you had an unpleasant childhood, um, perhaps um, an addictive parent or abuse of any sort, which I'd, I'd hate to bring that feeling up for you if that's happened to you, but it's just an easy way to illustrate. Um, say we've had an addicted, addictive parent, maybe alcoholic. Um, so say, for example, one person in the family, one child could choose consciously or subconsciously um, that they also are an addict or an alcoholic because they totally copied. And, they'd, and then they could also use that as a reason they can use it as like a um, to be a victim, um, but my dad was an alcoholic and not you know what I don't know anything else, so he did it and I, now I do it right. Or there, there could be another child in the same family that totally goes. I mean, I actually thinking of a family I know that that that's done this, and there's many of them. The other child in the family is a total teetotaler, goes the opposite, doesn't drink because they saw the trauma and they felt the the trauma of having an addicted parent. So again, it just shows me that we can choose, whether that's conscious or subconscious, we do choose whether we adopt a belief or not. 
All right, so so that's where I'm at with that. And if you want more and we can go even deeper than that, <laughs> then please ask me for a private consultation. Um, we Sometimes we don't, and here's another part of it, sometimes we don't actually know what it is. We Some people come to me and say, I don't know what my limiting belief is. I think it might be this. And then we talk for like 10 minutes and I'll find it because I can ask some key questions or ask some questions to get around to what it is and I can spot it from my research and my study and I, I know what they are, um, core beliefs. So let's talk about some, I'll use three popular topics and maybe you can recognize some in yourself and this helps to explain about my belief work if you want more help in this area. So let's talk about love and some beliefs we may have about love and ourself and even hearing this can be confronting. Sometimes some people, actually a lot, have a belief I am not lovable. I'm not loved. Even saying them sounds confronting. Sometimes I am not enough. And it's okay if you feel that way. Um, many people do and we can heal it. So sometimes we can form the belief of I'm not lovable and I'm not loved uh, in early childhood from our parents. Again, it can be subconscious. It's not like our parents ever wanted us to feel this way. Um, we could also feel it later in life. It could be romantic. Um, again, teenage years, uh, I think, are vital for those sort of um, messages that we receive. Perhaps our beloved doesn't return our feelings and those sort of examples. But we can go through all this, what it might be for you if you wanted to have a personal consultation. Um, suffice to say, we sometimes feel I'm not lovable, I'm not loved and I'm not enough. Now, they're big and I mean big core beliefs. And when I say that, I mean that when we shift them or delete them, that is totally life changing because then you are lovable. <laughs> Imagine what you can have then. So that's just touching on some loved ones. Um, let's talk about health. Um, I am sick. I'm always sick. I'm not saying that I am. I'm saying these are some of the beliefs I've heard from other people I've coached. I, didn't, I don't have the issues with the health, um, but many people do. Usually, again, like just to Again, put it all into perspective, usually, not always, sometimes we can have negative beliefs from a lot of um, areas in our life, but usually from my observations, people tend to have certain areas um, they fall down with and something eludes them. Like they may have love and not money. They may have money and not love. They may have a successful business and not have good health. They could have amazing, vibrant health and not be very successful. Right, so usually something eludes us and it's certainly from my experience and my observations, something from early childhood and we totally have copied our parents or we've copied their beliefs. Again, subconscious and totally not anyone's fault and another thing in my coaching is that when you come and see me if you want help, we, we talk about it, totally accepting that this has been created and it's okay and we, and we just accept that this is where we're at and it's and it's okay because we can certainly change. So that's that's how I start with people. It's okay, it doesn't matter where you're at today, let's heal this. And we start with the beliefs. So with health and I've coached people and I love these testimonials, people say they feel instantly better after speaking with me and then also um, doing my therapies and my healing, um, they feel better and they continue to feel better and it feels strange. Like they say, it feels strange, weird, strange to feel good because I'm so used to feeling sick. So that's an amazing testimonial for me and also the power of this coaching that also this totally applies to mental health. So say you feel sad, anxious, depressed, all those type of horrible negative feelings that totally limit us to not have a full life and then you do the belief shifting and you delete a belief that feels I am sad and then you're happy then that's totally life-changing. Um, that alone would change your life as well, just looking at health and mental health and physical health. Um, let's talk about money. There's some, so many, again, some common beliefs. I am poor. If you grow up poor, you could actually believe I am poor. So everything that you were to do to create more money would not result in the money or you would lose the money or you would default back to being poor because poor is the core belief. You could create money and then spend money. The belief could be I can't, I spend money. I can't keep money. Um, I can't save money. There's thousands of, there's many, many, many beliefs. Um, the message here today is that you have them 
You may and may not know what they are. If you don't know and you want me to help you discover them, that's an amazing aha moment in our lives when we go, oh my God, are you telling me that I believe this and that I've been carrying this around all my life and if I delete this, then my life will change? Yes, that's the power. We need to do that, otherwise we will default back to the core belief and then all the other work isn't working. And that's why. That's why we can do self-development work and affirmations. Now I'm going to get passionate. (laughs) we can do programs, my beautiful programs. I love them. And now it's like, don't do any of the programs or don't read another book until you shift the negative belief because you'll default back to it. So you need to delete the limiting belief before anything else. That's today's message. And then when we do that, we can then go on to the other steps for the creation of the desires and the feeling happy. But once you shift a negative belief, you will feel happy. So that's today's message. I will be publishing part two and three and um, teaching how to delete the limiting beliefs as a number one step. Um, So if you feel like you can relate to that, I am not lovable or I am unlovable or I'm not enough or there's not enough of anything, there's not enough money, or I'm sad, or any horrible belief, imagine the new life of new possibilities when you believe the opposite to that, which is I am lovable, I am enough, I am abundant, I'm happy. Wow, that's just totally, totally powerful and life-changing. So if you'd like more, if you'd like your own private consultation on how to discover yours or you just can't wait for part two and three (laughs) you want a coaching session um subject to availability um please inquire at donnahanks.com and um through that my website info at donnahanks.com is the best email info at donnahanks.com and i will look forward to helping you if you'd like more information and as always have an amazing day